stay. No, you stay. You stay. You stay right there. You stay right there. Do not. I'm taping. I really hope that's Lenny. Welcome to Highly Questionable. I'm Dan Levitard. That's Mina Kimes and Pablo. I hope she was talking to her dog and not her husband. Let's get it started. Should we all overreact to the decrepit old Tom Brady forgetting the downs at the end of last night's game? All right, that's really disrespectful. Like, this guy has been a champion across a couple of decades. He is 43 years old, and last night he's trying to play against a Khalil Mack, who is a monster and will cave in your entire offense no matter what age you are. So I understand that this is a diminished version of him. How could it not be? He's 43 years old. He's a little bit diminished. This is going to happen once in a while. And occasionally he'll give you the brilliance of the second half he gave you last week before this after throwing a pick six. From a football perspective, we should not overreact to anything. The Bears defense is excellent. Um, a number of Bucks made mental errors. They really killed themselves with penalties all game. It was Thursday night. To me, what's more interesting is the question of why it felt so delicious to watch Tom Brady make that sort of mental error at the end. The easy explanation is because we are all a bunch of haters. Tom Brady is a winner. Seeing him make a mental mistake fills the emptiness in all of our lives. Human, if he was still human. in New England, I would have said that with a Boston accent, but luckily he's in Tampa Bay, so I'll spare Thank you. God. Um, <laughs> but I actually think it's a little more complicated than that because earlier in the game, Dan, uh, you may have noticed Tom Brady reaming out his teammates on the sideline. So to me, the schadenfreude was less about Tom Brady failing and more about him getting his comeuppance, right? Like we've all had a boss do that and seeing him fail at the end was weirdly kind of satisfying given what he did earlier in the game. Wow. So I understand why it's delicious that not only did Tom Brady become J.R. Smith, this was basically LeBron becoming J.R. Smith. Like, that guy became that guy suddenly. That's a lot to process. It's also funny that Tom Brady apparently, every day, according to a 2017 Sports Illustrated article, cycles through 29 brain games on his iPad to keep his memory sharp. And so it's all funny, right, from that perspective. But Mina addressed it from a football and then psychological perspective. I want to address this from a Dan perspective because Dan – is the guy who like said Tom Brady was falling off a cliff like five years ago. And now suddenly he is finding empathy. And I wonder if that may be due to the fact that yesterday Dan called Alabama linebacker Dylan Moses, Dylan Thomas, you know, the Welsh poet. And is also yes. the guy who routinely <laughs> mistakes memes for real life events. So I just right. think that Dan is probably yes. relating right. Yes. to J.R. Smith wow. more than he ever has. This yes. Point. Wow. I think that was an inside joke inside of an inside joke while we were talking about Tom Brady and you guys having had him gone from washed to now senile. Senile where he can't remember the downs, that he's having a senior moment last night. This is the situation we're in with Tom Brady. We are no longer in a place where we expect when Nick Foles has scored, gotten a field goal with a minute 12 left in the game, where we expect, oh, you've left too much time for Tom Brady. What you saw last night is no, time has caught up to him, rather literally. But Dan, Tom Brady failing physically is something we expect. When we expect him to struggle at this point, it'll be because of his arm or his legs, not because of his mind. His mind, as Pablo said, is supposed to be what carries him through the season. So seeing his brain, despite all the brain games, which I don't know what that is, fail. I'm, I'm picturing like a high-level Sudoku, like Tom Brady. Yes, that's Sudoku pretty much what it is. All right. So seeing him fail because of his brain is actually surprising. But hold on. I also want to address this from a Mina perspective now, because Mina oh, just the then tried to God. pretend like she doesn't know what a brain game is when she does crossword puzzle apps within like nine That's minutes right. every day yes. of the week. So both yes. of you guys, total yeah. frauds. You know, he's right. I, he's actually right on that one, Mina. He's got us there. Crosswords aren't games. They're serious. <laughs> Do, you Do you see, see any path, path for the Lakers, Lakers to choke, choke away, away this series? series? 
All right. Uh, choking away a series would not give enough credit, I don't think, to a valiant Miami team if they were willing and ready while well injured to get past the Lakers and win this thing. But we would crush LeBron if he ended up losing this thing. The flimsy arguments I can make on behalf of the Heat, Tyler Hero is one for nine on wide open threes. That's not the kind of thing that's going to keep repeating itself. Duncan Robinson hasn't been as terrible at any point this season as he's been in these finals in terms of invisibility visible from three, maybe you could shoot your way back into a series, but I know all of you expect it to be Mamba out tonight. I'm guessing that it's black uniforms, it's funeral, it's LeBron is going to get a great Hollywood moment bringing a championship to Los Angeles in the city of Kobe Bryant in the year of his death. It's over. Not, not just because um, of the stifling defense on Jimmy Butler, from Anthony Davis, or because without Goran Dragic, the Heat don't really have a secondary playmaker, but because every time the camera pans to LeBron and rests on his face, he looks exactly like my dad when he used to have to take my brother and I to the grocery store. He is freaking over it. Like, he just wants to go <laughs> home and sit in a dark room and watch a Ken Burns documentary. That man wants out of the bubble, and that is why he is going to close out the series tonight. Like, he is not going to spend another night in Florida. I don't see my dad and LeBron James, although I do call my dad the LeBron James of Filipino urologists, incidentally. But I do agree with Mina. Oh God. I do agree with Mina that this is over. I just am not going to go so much farther than that because I know the question was phrased as, is there a chance the Lakers could choke this away? This is a trap. Like, all you guys want to do in case the Heat actually do pull this out is cut all the words I'm saying except for the phrase, the Heat have no That's shot right. to come back here, That's and then right. they're going to play it back in my face. Right. So, like, no, right. I see the leaves over the hole in the ground of the forest. No, say the thing. It. Come on, quit fearing the take and say the thing. Say how over it is, both it. of you. Say it. Say the words right now. It. Wait. Say it I clearly. It. Wait, edit the parts where I quoted Mina no, out because that no. was not my words. It's Those were her over. words for the it's record. over. Poppy, feel free to Poppy, use this is for it one over? of your Poppy, videos. Poppy, is it over? You tell them, Poppy. You can't think it's over. I'm not worried at all. LeBron is going to get a little tickle in back of his throat and then... <coughs> Oh God! Oh, wow! Oh God! No! 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 LeBron is no, going to Bobby. choke like in 2011. LeBron is going to choke harder than Russell Wilson in the goal line. Why oh, didn't come on! Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. No! LeBron is yes. going to choke harder than the 76ers in the playoffs. Pablo, oh, you're wow. still a nerd. J.R. Smith is going to forget the score Why? again. Why? Anthony yes. Davis is going to get another boo-boo and cry like a seven-foot baby again. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> the Lakers, more like the Fakers. Jack oh, Nicholson, wow, really? Oh, wow, man, this is fan. very Patrick long. Johnson refuses to work for the Lakers. <laughs> Jerry West refuses to work for the Lakers. Jack Lifer, Kamar Odom, Heat Lifer. Corinne, oh, wow. Fox Lifer. Paul Gasol, Chrysler's lifer. I have been saying it all along. Hitting seven, no three, okay. one lead is safe. Just ask those shockers in Golden State. It is all going according <laughs> to plan. They beat the Pacers in four. They beat the Bucks in five. They beat Boston in six. And now they're going wow. to beat the Lakers in seven. <laughs> Papi has spoken. Miami I mean... 2020 NBA champions. <laughs> Poppy has spoken. Why did Poppy not stop speaking? That was the longest rant he's <laughs> ever had on this show. Will you guys hop back on the Browns bandwagon if they beat the Colts on Sunday? I'm actually eager to hear what Mina has to say about this because, Pablo, I'm sorry, no knock on your credentials, but I really do think Very that good. Mina knows what she's talking about when it comes to the deep analysis on these teams. I have seen the Browns have a very good running game. I have seen them beat what I think to be bad teams. I've seen them get smoked by the Ravens. But last year, I saw them smoke the Ravens and then not have a very good season. So they have been good enough against bad teams, and they haven't been very good against the one that made us howl at the beginning of the season because of how they looked against the Ravens when you're thinking of them as competing with the Ravens this year if they were to meet last year's expectations. But I want to hear from Mina on this because I'm actually curious. Are they good or are they not good? 
You said actually like four times. I'm actually interested in what Nina <laughs> has to say. I'm actually curious in her analysis. At least um, he's interested. Really, an enthusiastic endorsement of what I'm about to say. This is the sexiest matchup of the weekend, which is funny not only because it's the Browns and the Colts, but because uh, these are two deeply unsexy teams. Like for as much as we talk about the Browns playmakers, OBJ, Baker, the strength of this team is now the offensive line. Meanwhile, the Colts actually have the best defense in the NFL up to this point. They rank first in just about every metric, admittedly against some rather lackluster opponents. So to address the question, if the Browns offense can overcome this defense, then yes, by all means, you should jump on the Cleveland bandwagon. I'm glad we got analysis from a person who once said that her sexuality is Andy Reid going for it on fourth down. I believe that was Amina Kimes' statement, which just contextualizes all of Mina's various (laughs) kinks. Uh, I prepared for this segment, on the other hand, by talking to birthday boy Mike Ryan, noted Cleveland Browns fan, who tried to convince me that the Browns actually, having beaten the Washington football team and the Cowboys, like, and the Bengals, that those teams are basically division leaders, and so they should be getting credit for it, when in fact, they all have a combined three wins between three teams. So no, I am not going to jump on the Browns bandwagon. The Browns bandwagon kind of reminds me of a monster truck. Super, super powerful and a lot going on, right? Like noisy, loud, but it also ends up upside down somehow all the time. Like, I don't want to get into that car. I'm sorry, even if it looks fun for a time. Have you ever been to a monster truck rally? God, no. I know, right? That's so true. That's so true. He was speaking. He would never go to a monster truck rally. Yeah. Coming up next on my Soul Stevie show. Nothing. Didn't even try. That has been a long time since I've laughed like that on television. I I hadn't. I completely (laughs) missed that element of it. Highly Questionable is presented by Samuel Adams from Boston with love. Savor the centric personality. He's super interesting. He seemed almost confined by baseball. And so he's here to tell you, it, without saying the actual words, we're really great at baseball. And it's not because we cheated. It's because we're great. Look, I'm going to keep telling you again and again what I'm going to throw to you, and then I'm going to throw it to you, and you're not going to do anything about it. This is the catalog before last night. Oh, my. Everybody knows what sign they're going with now. This is incredible. I love that. It works. It pops him up. Who wants it? Josh Reddick. Yeah, it's really hard to hit a baseball when Zach Greinke is throwing it very hard at you. So let's see how this went yesterday. How did it go yesterday with the Astros? Now the surprise deep into the playoffs, even though they weren't very good this season. Spot. Oh, it's with men on base. There are no outs, and he's telling him what's coming. (laughs) Oh, are you kidding me? (laughs) 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 It didn't really work that time. Sometimes you tell him what's coming, and it explodes in your face. I respect that move because it reminds me of when you're playing rock, paper, scissors with somebody, and you're like, I'm going to throw paper. I'm going to throw paper. Rock, paper. Paper. But the problem with Zach Greinke is that he began to open his hand like well before he actually threw it. Like everybody, that was a hanging 85 mile an hour slider. You can say whatever you want. Everyone's going to crush that. That reminds me of the classic rock, paper, scissors mood where you'd kind of put your hand like this and be like, no, actually, that's paper afterwards, even though you know, kind of was like an thing. Um, I did see some pitchers, some actual MLB pitchers on Twitter well, actually, this uh, whole storyline and saying he wasn't dipping his pitches, that it was like some weird sign to the catcher and it wasn't giving away. I don't care. I don't care. I am all in on vilifying the Astros and I am all in on the Astros making it to the World Series as someone who has no vested interest in any of these teams. That is clearly the best outcome for the most interesting game, right? Like we all should be rooting for the Astros to make it yes. to the end and play the Dodgers. Oh, wow. That's funny that you should say that though, because I feel like old timey baseball heads are saying, no, it's got to be Yankees Dodgers, like in the seventies and the eighties. Like, isn't that what's happening? Or that you, you want the storyline of the cheaters, not the history yes. of the game. That is so much more interesting. You don't want to see the bad guy get killed in the second act of the movie. That's true. 
Do you question which catcher should be more ashamed? All right, so we got youth baseball situations. We're getting out of the playoffs, all these great storylines, these professional storylines that Mina was so excited about. And now we're just giving you youth baseball plays at the plate. We got a first, we got a play at the plate. What happens here? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, I knew no. that camera was there. Oh, no. That is no. embarrassing. Wait. Also, how old is that picture? Yo. Watch him. He looks like someone's dad. <laughs> wait, watch him. Whoa. <laughs> you're, wait, you're, he's wearing blue jeans? Is he wearing jeans? Wait a minute. We've wait, got such what? great... <laughs> I was I was so focused on the kid that I missed the fact that there was a uh, an actor playing the role of a child very unconvincingly. A nearby plumber in jeans came over. To me. Your like, kids, your, your, your kids still play baseball wearing jeans. Oh, oh, this <laughs> He's on. wearing jeans. What is this? Wait a minute. Why is he wearing jeans? Covert Wrangler spawn con of a video. What? None of this makes any sense. All right, hold on a second. So now we've got a second video. We've got a two ball count. Hold on here. we got a two Fred ball Ford. count or a two one count. What do we have here? All right, ball three, ball three or... Ball three. Oh, ball three. Oh, oh you got to wow. tag him. I'm oh, sorry. I didn't man. tell you the bases were loaded. Okay, <laughs> but un unless they, unless this video has a picture of a 45 year old plumber in jeans interloping in a game, then there's no dispute, which is the better video here. Everything about that guy. Everything about that guy, man. <laughs> he slides in. He, he she barges in. I want to watch it again, but we can't. We got to finish the show. Yeah, I just, I just love him. The idea of him just running in from a. He was working on a sink nearby, <laughs> and he just ran over and then got in the video. I just love, as I said, that that kid who made that incredibly athletic play. Is gonna get like you're on ESPN, man, and he's gonna turn it on, and we're gonna be dialed in on the team pitcher. He's gonna be like, oh yeah, I grab my crotch and everything. They're definitely gonna use that, of course. How can they possibly not show me again? again. Front flipping and grabbing my crotch. Look, all this and why? Why is that man there? Highly questionable is presented by Samuel Adams from Boston with love. Savor the flavor responsibly. Part of Happy Hour.